Master and Apprentice by Claudia Gray is out today. This has been a highly anticipated book for me because Qui-Gon Jinn is one of my favorite prequel era characters. He's just who I look to as, like, the model Jedi, in my opinion. Not only that, but Claudia Gray is a fantastic writer. She's had three other Star Wars books so far, and she knocked all of them out of the park. So, does Master and Apprentice live up? That's what we'll explore today, and I will keep it all spoiler-free. The story takes place seven to eight years before the events of The Phantom Menace. Obi-Wan has been Qui-Gon's Padawan for about four years, but their relationship isn't the best. They haven't really gelled, but a solution presents itself in the form of Qui-Gon being offered a seat on the Jedi Council. While Qui-Gon considers the invitation, he and Obi-Wan are summoned to a planet in crisis by an old friend where the relationship between Master and Apprentice will truly be tested. As is the case with many prequel stories, there is a challenge to write conflict that we as the audience don't already know the answer to. Because we do know that Qui-Gon doesn't wind up on the Jedi Council, and we do know that Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon continue to work together. So while the heart of this story is relatable and interesting to read about, there needs to be a little more, and there is. The old friend I mentioned is Rael Alvaras, a fellow Jedi and, like Qui-Gon, a former Padawan of Count Dooku. He's a really great character with a compelling backstory. I wanted to learn more about him right from his introduction. He serves as kind of a friendly foil to Qui-Gon. I mean, they were both trained by the same master. Neither of them can really be considered to be by-the-book Jedi. I've always appreciated Qui-Gon's flexibility when it comes to the Jedi Code, and Rail is kind of a cautionary tale, like what happens when that flexibility goes a little bit too far. So together, Rail and Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan all have to deal with a smaller kind of problem, which makes complete sense for this point in the timeline. We're seeing the Jedi during relative peacetime, and it's really interesting to see how their day-to-day -day is when they aren't serving as generals in the Clone Wars. I would say it's refreshing to have a story without crazy high galactic stakes. Like the title would suggest, this book deals a lot with the student-teacher relationship. We get to see examples of all kinds, from Dooku and Qui-Gon, Dooku and Rail, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan, Rail and his former Padawan, Rail and his current protege. There are all of these different masters and apprentices that we get to look at. We see some who are successful at teaching, some who fail, and some who do both. And because this is a Qui-Gon story, there's also exploration and criticism of the Jedi Order, how they handle training their next generation, their inability or unwillingness to stop practices like slavery outside of the Republic, and so on. Like most Star Wars stories before it, Master and Apprentice effectively uses the galaxy far, far away to teach us lessons we can use in our own lives. We also get to take a nice long look at Qui-Gon's relationship with prophecy. Something I've always found to be interesting in The Phantom Menace is how a pragmatic Jedi like Qui-Gon could get so caught up into the prophecy of a chosen one, and this book has a lot to say about it. What is a prophecy? What does our interpretation of prophecy say about ourselves and our values? What are the dangers of trying to understand and control the future? And most importantly, how do we choose between right and wrong when we have information that maybe we shouldn't know? I think I'm going to be picking some of this stuff apart for a long time because it goes deep. For example, Avaros is probably named after Muslim philosopher Ibn Rushdie, who was also known as Avaros. I'm not that smart, I didn't just know that. There's a Rushdie quote about prophecy at the start of the book. But all the prophecy talk was probably my favorite aspect of the story, getting to see Qui-Gon explore these ideas not only with Obi-Wan, but also with Dooku in flashbacks, which was, of course, very enticing. The author of the upcoming Dooku Jedi Lost audio drama said he spoke with Claudia Gray a handful of times while he wrote his story, so I expect we might get to see even more exploration about this at the end of the month. Overall, I liked Master and Apprentice. It didn't blow me away like some of Claudia Gray's other books. I just didn't seem to connect with a lot of the main story elements, but I will say that I loved everything that had to do with the prophecy or Count Dooku, and those did make up a significant portion of the book. So it's not my favorite Star Wars book, but I would still give it a very heavy, strong recommendation if you like Claudia Gray's writings, if you want to hear anything about Count Dooku or Qui-Gon, and especially if you want to hear some exploration or discussion on the Force and prophecy and morality in Star Wars.
If you're interested in checking it out for yourself, consider picking it up for free on Audible. Just follow the link in the description or visit www.audibletrial.com slash Star Wars Explained. The audiobook is out right now, and the production value on all the Star Wars books is very high, with sound effects and music. It's like listening to a movie. Signing up for an Audible trial will get you a credit for one free book, and you can use it on Master and Apprentice, or just about any Star Wars book you can think of. Or get any book you want. The point is, you get a free book, and you'll be supporting the channel when you do. But that's it for today. Keep an eye out for even more Master and Apprentice coverage in the next weeks. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.